to College Football Final, presented by Mazda. How do we start every week at College Football Final with some of the best finishes across the country, starting with Syracuse, Wake Forest, Sam Hartman, overtime, 33-30, Kendall hit, the ball is snatched away, and look at Trill Williams, 94 yards, and they had it going at the Carrier Dome. Syracuse wins 39-30, the final. What about another rivalry out west, UNLV at Nevada, another overtime, third overtime, third and four. Kenyon Oblad finds Steve Jenkins, game-winning touchdown. But look at this, after it, there was a fight. Love it. That's what makes it special. You, you love the fight? In a rivalry game. Okay. That's passion, Joe. Well, I, I did just know. I did not know coach. that. Nevada, a much better team, but that is how we begin Fights rivalry and rivalry show. games is yeah. what you like. And that's what makes it special? Conversa conversations. Healthy conversations. Healthy con yeah. I thought it was a trophy, yeah, but apparently it's the fight. All right. Joey's going to already bring the show down. Jesse Palmer, Joey Galloway, Matt Perry. We're three rivals, but we love each other. One of the best rivalries in all the sport. We say this every year about the Iron Bowl. Could it be any better than the last? Well, I present you Saturday's edition. Nick Saban tried to win his fifth Iron Bowl in last six matchups. Under six to go, second quarter. Game tied at 10. Mac Jones to smoke Monday, intercepts the pass and avoids tacklers pick six. This is a big question mark for Mac Jones. On the road, hostile environment versus the best defense he's faced. You see Steve Sarkeesian talking to him there. Had Jerry Judy wide open, but it was a big miss. Early momentum for the Tigers, but the ensuing kickoff. You know how you stop momentum after the home team gets to pick six? You do this. 98 yards, Jalen Waddle. And it, have, it helps if you have one of the fastest players in college football. Waddle down the sideline, great blocking. And this is just the beginning for Waddle. He had a huge game. Monster Day, you're right, Joey. Nine seconds left in the first half. Third and ten. Auburn trying to get in the field goal range. Bo Nix is going to get this to Booby Whitlow. Now I want you to have a look at this. Whitlow takes 17 yards to get into field goal range, but it looks as if the clock goes out. Yeah, it looks like the clock goes out here, but you're going to see Gus Malzahn. He starts signaling, whoa, whoa, one second left. Is he right? So the refs would take another look. Is he right? One second would get added back on the clock, and they would get an opportunity for a field but see, goal. see, you look there. It looked as if he was down home clock. Who knows what happens, but either way, you see the official step back. Anders Carlson, he winds the clock with the one second left. They just get the snap off. 52 yarder. Okay, so that's Gus. He loves it. Was he saving? I cannot so not believe not so you let that happen. The clock was going to start the referee's whistle. Amazing. 31 27 at the half. Now Alabama driving. Jones, Zacopi McLean. You talk about it bounced the right way. 100 yard interception return. Mac Jones accounted for six touchdowns in this game. Unfortunately for Alabama, two of those touchdowns were to the Auburn defense. You had the kick six, you had the pick six. Auburn takes a 37 31 lead early fourth quarter. Bama trails by two. First and 10, Bama at the Tigers' 29-yard line. Jones lobs one perfectly for Waddle. Jones did throw for 335 yards, though, and four TDs. Look at Waddle. He's 5'10", climbs the ladder. Looks like he's 6'6 six, six on this one. First Alabama player with four TDs in the Iron Bowl ever. That's a historic stat for you. The high point for Waddle. Bama takes the lead back. Just over eight minutes to play. Third and five. Booby Whitlow to Sean Shivers. Physical. Whitlow, direct snap. He had 114 yards rushing this game, so defense has to respect him. Pitch it to Shivers, and you can see downhill running. I love it. That's Iron Bowl football. Two-point conversion good. Auburn leads by three. Ensuing drive. Fourth and seven for the tide. Jones has the feet, uses it to move the chain. Yeah, Mac Jones made some good decisions throwing it, but also running it. And Tua on the bench, he loves it. So the drive would stall for Alabama. Joseph Bulovus on for the field goal attempt. Here's how it sounded. Snap is down, the kick is on the way, and the kick, he missed it, he missed it. it hit the upright, it hit the upright, and with two minutes to go, Auburn will get the ball back, leading by three. No one has missed more field goals in the country since 2007, Saban's first year, than Alabama. It's suing drive for Auburn, fourth and four, confusion for Alabama. They see Bo Nix and the punter out on the field, Waddle back to return the punt. 
Nix is still on the field. Nix notices Alabama has too many guys. They get a flag for substitution. 13 penalties for Alabama in this game. We've seen some of this this season out of this Alabama team. Penalties in crucial situations. 12 guys on the field. Penalty, Auburn gets a first down and keeps the ball with a chance to run out the clock. Gentlemen, we talk about Auburn eye candy all of the time. The eye candy this time got Auburn the win. 93 points of the second most in series history. And how about them Tigers? They get the win at home against Alabama. I'm real proud of our team. I faced a lot of adversity. We said all week, we get the fourth quarter, we'll win. Sure enough, they missed a field goal. And we put the game away, and a uh, great win for us. You know, the disappointing thing uh, to me is, you know, we came here with the idea that uh, we needed to play with a lot of discipline, uh, not get a lot of penalties, and I don't think we did that great. Uh, we got way too many penalties, put ourselves in a lot of bad situations. All right, so the Tide are now 0-7 on the road against Auburn when both teams were ranked in the AP poll, including vacated games. Alabama 114-0 in the AP poll era when scoring at least 45 points in a game. No team had scored more than 45 against Alabama in Saban's first 175 games at the school. Now two of the last four have both went over that mark. So I think if you use an adjective to describe that full screen and really what we saw on Saturday was uncharacteristic. I'm going to use that word to start with you, Jesse. What was uncharacteristic about the tie? A lot of different things, and you just heard Nick Saban say it, guys. Undisciplined football, sloppy football. Look, you can't throw two pick sixes and expect to win a game of this magnitude, right? Joe, you talked earlier, 13 penalties. That's the most Alabama's ever had when coached by Nick Saban, so it's killing drives on offense, prolonging drives on defense. They surrendered 96 yards of field position in this game, and then finally, you miss a field goal as well. That's now happened 101 times under Nick Saban at Alabama since he took over. That's the most in the country. So we knew this was an opportunity to prove to the committee they were unequivocally one of the top four teams in the country. But playing on the road against a rival in this type of environment without a conference championship, without Tua, they weren't going to be able to afford these types of mistakes. They had to bring their A game. Matt, they didn't do that. That's why they're out of the playoff. And you saw it there at the end. You had the substitution error at the end, which cost them the game. But again, a Nick Saban team typically doesn't do make those kind of mistakes. On the other side of it, maybe some uncharacteristic traits out of Auburn. What did you see? Yeah, young true freshman Bo Nix has not been great against ranked opponents. He's playing his first Iron Bowl, biggest game of his career, and he took care of the football number one, and that is the key, no turnovers, but he made timely throws. He made the plays they needed him to make, and Bo Nix isn't going to win football games for you, but he has to manage the game, and this throw he makes to Seth Williams, it is a great catch. But what Bo Nix does is he fits this ball in between the corner and the safety in a place where only Seth Williams can come down with this catch. Had 173 yards passing the game and the one touchdown, which you're going to see to Sal Canella, the location of the ball. Sal Canella is a tall tight end. He has a cornerback matchup. And he, and again, Bo Nix throws this ball where only, that's good coverage. That is. You know, if you're a cornerback, you're thinking, what else can I do? You throw it to a 6'5 tight end yep. with that kind of location where only he can go get it. Bo Nix grew up a lot in this game. We'll see what the future holds for him, but this is a huge game for him. The moment didn't look too big for him. He had the home crowd behind him, and now Alabama's playoff shot all but gone because we said this is the last chance to put a button on their resume. Now, we know Ohio State, Michigan, one of the other great rivalries in all of college football. We know the Buckeyes are in the Big Ten Championship, likely in the playoff. The big house was rocking. Under two minutes to go in the first quarter, Buckeyes come in having one in seven straight over Michigan. This a virtual lock for Jess. Justin Field finds Chris Olave. What touch. Yeah, and last year Don Brown, the D coordinator for Michigan, played a lot of man-to-man -man coverage. That was a zone, but the safety didn't get depth. It was a bust and Olave makes him pay. Also a 14-6 lead, and then it just became J.K. Dobbins. When they play ranked teams, J.K. Dobbins has been a monster all season long. Michigan just didn't have enough up front to stop it. So Michigan trying to stay in it here. 21-13. Shea Patterson fumbles the snap. Robert Landers picks it up for the Buckeyes. Have another look. Yeah, Michigan was up and down the field, 285 yards of offense in the first half. Here, uh, Patterson just takes his eyes off the ball. Big missed opportunity. All right, so they, they try to get the Ohio State offense off the field with a punt, but then they jump. 
So it's a five yards offsides penalty in a game of this magnitude. You cannot make those mistakes. Move the chains, first down Buckeyes. Later in the drive, Dobbins takes advantage. Michigan's playing with a six-man box. You cannot stop any run game, but J.K. Dobbins, one of the best in the country, had 211 yards rushing with four touchdowns. All right, third quarter now, 35 to 16, and this was a scary moment. Fields drops back, finds Austin Mack. That not the story. What was was that Fields' plant leg was rolled up on, writhing in pain. He would go to the tent, have another look at that. That is not what you want to see out of your star quarterback. So he would come back, Jess. He was in the medical tent, waved off the attention back in there, threw on a knee brace. Yeah, and look if what we're in a left knee brace, I'm thinking, okay, no, there's no way they're going to let him throw this first play. Yeah, they do. And not only that, he escapes, scrambles to his left, and throws back across his body and finds Garrett Wilson for the touchdown. Take that's, a look. That's got to be debilitating. When you think about the quarterback out, he comes back in with a knee brace, rolls out, mobile, hostile, agile, 42-16. Buckeyes at that point, fourth quarter. 42-27, fourth and one. Harbaugh goes for it. Hassan Haskins lines up in the backfield, gets the snap, and he's stuck. This D-line for Ohio State is really good. Chase Young, no tackles in this game, and still they dominate up front. Under seven minutes now, Dobbins, the handoff, Dobbins, the sideline, Dobbins, the huge What a game. workhorse. 36 carries last week against Penn State. He goes 31 carries in this one, 211 rushing yards, four TDs. Let's get this guy an invite to New York City. And let's get them home because they were crying again at the big house. Eight in a row for the Buckeyes, 56-27. Fields and Dobbins loved it. I'm not satisfied. I'm not even close to being satisfied. Because <laughs> I just feel like there's so much more I can prove, you know, my God-given talent. See, I feel like a lot of people are overlooking it. I just, I just think we uh, take it more serious than they do. I think uh, we prepare for it all year. Uh, like Coach Mick said, we're, we're preparing for them next year right now. So we're, we're endorsing Dobbins here officially in college football final to get a Heisman invite. Send the man. Okay. All right. And look at it. He's just joined fellow Buckeye James Otis and Robert Ferguson. There's just three players in the history of Ohio State to rush for four touchdowns. Not surprisingly, each of these players were on the winning team in that game. As for the losing side of this, Jim Harbaugh just can't seem to get it done, and he was asked about it following the game. Is this a talent gap? Is it a preparation gap? In a coaching gap, what is the biggest difference between you and Ohio State at this point? I mean, I'll answer your questions, not your insults. So that wasn't an insult. I mean, you gave them 118 points in two years. They played really good. They played good. But that's why I'm asking. What's, what's the biggest difference in the gap between you guys? They played better today. All right. So. It's a fair question from the reporter to ask because it appears since Harbaugh has been there, there is a gap between the programs. When you look at one side of the ball for Michigan, where do you find the biggest gap is between Michigan, Ohio State, and some of the other teams in the Big Ten? It's the skill positions, and it stands out the past couple years and, and what the Ohio State offense has been able to do against Michigan. Now, Harbaugh can't come out and say that there's a talent gap, right. but if you've watched them play, there's a talent gap. They don't have a J.K. Dobbins on their team. They'll have a guy against all ranked opponents that's running for over 150 Yards. He has nine touchdowns against ranked opponents, which leads the country. Four different receivers caught a touchdown in this game. Yeah. Michigan doesn't have that kind of skill level. And then you put Justin Fields in your backfield who threw for 300 in this game. You can always see a speed difference between Ohio State, not just Michigan, but everyone in the Big Ten. When it comes down to man-to-man -man coverage on the back end, you'll see wide open receivers running. And you can always tell speed when you see guys take off running and watch Dobbins pulling away from 30, pulling yeah. away from 20. 24. That's how you tell how fast guys are moving. When you see the gap increase mm -hmm. when they take off running full speed, and that's what Ohio State has done against Michigan, not just this season, but in past seasons, there's absolutely a talent gap in the skill positions. The speed gap on their side of the ball, and then, Jess, you think perhaps maybe with the big guys it could be a gap. Yeah, and listen, they play in the same division, but Michigan's not in the same league as Ohio State right now, and I'm going to take the other side of this. I think there's a big gap discrepancy in the trenches right now, offensive and defensive line. We've seen it this year for Michigan defensively. Big games against Wisconsin and Ohio State. Their D line, their front seven, they're getting pushed around. And I understand they lost key players to the NFL draft last year, but good programs are able to replenish 
and restock that. Offensively, we have not seen Michigan able to run the football this year. Up front on the old line, they don't have guys pushing people around and getting running backs into the second level. Mm -hmm. In the five games since Jim Harbaugh has been there, and in this game, they've lost three of them by at least 29 points, and in every game, they're getting outrushed by an average of 150 yards per game. Until Jim Harbaugh and Michigan are able to make up that talent discrepancy yep. on the O-line and the D-line, they cannot be competitive, in my opinion, in this series, regardless of who's coaching the Wolverines. We say it all the time, Michigan can be having a really good season, then they go up against Ohio State and perhaps see how far they really are from competing in this series. Jim Harbaugh, the first Wolverines coach to lose five straight against the Buckeyes. They've allowed 118 points over its last two meetings with Ohio State, the most by either side in back-to-back -back games since Ohio State allowed 122 across the games in 1902 and 1903. And who doesn't remember those? All right, Ohio State, we know, is in the Big Ten Championship. Who gets to tee it up with them? Wisconsin or Minnesota battle for the Axe and the Big Ten West. Plus, we continue to discuss the race for number four. Is it Utah? Is it Baylor? Is it Oklahoma? Find out as we are off and running on College Football Final. I got my cape on like superheroes do. Up College Football Final is presented by Mazda. Feel alive and in part by Taco Bell's Roll Chicken Tacos Party Packs and Ice Cold Dr. Pepper, the official drink of Fansville. Welcome back to College Football Final. Wisconsin, Minnesota, who gets the right to play Ohio State in the Big Ten Championship? Row in the boat, Bucky the Badger, beautiful day, in Minneapolis. Looked like football weather, smelled like the Big Ten. Second quarter, Wisconsin trailing Jack Cohn to Jonathan Taylor. We knew weather was going to be an issue in this game. Who could make these kind of plays? You get the ball to your best player out in space, and he gets a big first down. And you guys, you mentioned it throughout the day. Taylor was able to add this to his game. Comes down with another great catch here. Yeah, Minnesota came into this game best passing offense in the Big Ten, but it was Jack Cohn who throws for 280 yards, two TDs in the snow. This one to Jonathan Taylor. Nice job. You're seeing a a new dimension this season from Jonathan Taylor. More receptions and his NFL stock has rise. First time in his career, he had more receiving yards than rushing yards in the first half. Snow really picked up in the third quarter now. Wisconsin ball inside their own 10. Cone to Quintez Cephas. What a great grab here. Yeah, Cephas had a big day. Five catches, 114 yards, and one touchdown. This one on the sideline turns his body, doesn't let the snow affect him. That was a pickup of 31, and then Cephas, five receptions, 114 yards, and a perfect strike. I love the read there by Jack Cone. Split safety, Cephas against the linebacker. Paul Chris knows we're taking that all day. Fourth quarter, Minnesota down 14, fourth and goal. P.J. Fleck. Trying to get something going. Tanner Morgan tries to find Tyler Johnson. Caesar Williams breaks up the pass. Tyler Johnson, one of 2,000 yard receivers on this Minnesota team, but the Wisconsin defense did a nice job of containing them today. And then Taylor goes up the middle, finished with three touchdowns, 22 on his career. Wisconsin gets the win, and what a season it was for P.J. Fleck and Minnesota, who come up short 38 17. They made the place. When they presented themselves, we did not make the plays when they presented themselves. And usually all year, we made those plays. And um, when you don't make those plays, a game like this happens. We really wanted to know that you take from us, we're going to come back for it. But you did that, and you get the Big Ten West title. What does it mean right now to walk and know that you're going to Indianapolis? Yeah, definitely. And we just want to know that we're going to come out to play at all four quarters. Rematch from earlier in the season. It was a 38-7 beatdown. Third time the Big Ten title game will be a rematch from earlier in the season, first since 2012. Utah needed to shore things up at a Pac-12 South, taking on Colorado, still in the hunt for the playoffs. Should they get the win? Look at that. Just look at that scenic view out there in Utah. Salt Lake City. I love yeah. it. First quarter, 
Steven Montez avoids the sack, finds Brady Russell for the touchdown. Great play by Montez, and they converted a fourth of five earlier on this drive. Big game for Colorado, because with the win, they would become bowl eligible. Did anyone tell Colorado they weren't supposed to cooperate? They did early, and then Brent Keithy takes over. Keithy had a big day, accounted for three touchdowns. This one on the ground, had two carries for 59 yards. You said something about Keithy, that for 44 yards. Why not give it to Keithy again? Yet another efficient day by Tyler Huntley, throwing the football 14 of 17, keeping the offense on schedule. I'm smelling helmet sticker implications. One minute to play in the third. Damari Simpkins, 24-7. You need a big play on special teams to put it away. Damari Simpkins does just that. And Utah needed to win this game to get to the Pac-12 championship game because they lost earlier in the season to USC. So they needed this win. They get it. They go away with it. And now they have the momentum heading into next week. Mission accomplished, 45-15. Utah heading to Pac-12 championship. Uh, an opportunity for our program to take another step forward, and that's the next step in the evolution of this program is to is to try to win the Pac-12. We've been champions of the South now two years in a row, and and so the next step is try to get over that next hump. That next like hurdle. in terms of enjoying it, how, how I don't enjoy, enjoy anything. I just keep keep coaching. That next hump, it's a duck and Justin Herbert in Oregon. Friday for the Pac-12 championship. What about Bedlam, Oklahoma State, Oklahoma? They're also fighting for that fourth spot. They're already in the Big 12 championship game. Jalen Hurts early on made Oklahoma State. Uh, how would you like to be that safety? This guy's uh, run for 3,200 yards in his career. You play man-to-man, -man, you blitz, nothing's open. Hurts is going to take off. Now 10-7, Hurts to Lee Morris. Slips at the six-yard line. Just y'all dare to be oh, great. Trying to slide? Come on. Safe. Took that page out of Galloway. Then Hurts, little trickeration here. CD Lamb to basket back to Hurts. Does this play ever not work? No. Teams who just run it five, six times a game. It is wide open every single time. It's, uh, now this one's called the Sooner Special. And then they're having fun with Dak Prescott and his warm up routine for the Dallas Cowboys. Fourth quarter, uh, this is all Hurts to Braden Willis. Yeah, second player in the FBS this year. Jalen Hurts to have a passing touchdown, rushing touchdown, receiving touchdown. Nathan Rourke from Canada did too, by the way. I've, I've but heard. Oklahoma would go on and win Bedlam. Yeah, five in a row. Bedlam. Five in a row from Bedlam, and, and Hurts was asked after the game. He wants to know about the Sooner special. He threw a good ball. I went and caught it. We scored. We put points on the board. That's all that mattered to me. It was huge, really, on both sides. We we didn't turn it over here, and then and then got several ourselves, and that made made all the difference in the world. And so, uh, no, it's been a big emphasis. I thought Jalen played really clean. Our ball carriers took care of the ball. It was just a really clean night all around. All right, so Oklahoma gets set for their rematch against Baylor, who had. You know, glorified, let's get better stat day against Kansas. Charlie Brewer to Tyquan Thornton, 51 yards. But the defense did create six turnovers, man. So I know you have a defensive highlight somewhere over there. I don't, because next I have Jermichael Hayes. It's all about offense. And Charlie Brewer struggled throwing the football, but Hasey accounted for three TDs, and Baylor scored lots of points, style points in this one. Style points, the defense looked good. The final score in this one, 61 to 6. Baylor, OU, rematch, bring it. Only four FBS teams have ever won 11 games after losing 11 games with only one season in between. Baylor the fourth and now have an opportunity to play themselves into the CFP by averaging, avenging their only loss of the season when they take on Oklahoma in the Big 12 title game. Coming up next, what's got Dabo all hot and bothered after Clemson went to South Carolina and beat up on the Gamecocks. Plus, Who's in? Joey might make an argument for three number one teams. And Jesse and I will just sit there and watch that next on College Football Final. This is College Football Final, presented by Mazda. All that stood in LSU's way of a perfect regular season was the team that, with them, changed the overtime rules a season ago, seven of them. Joe Burrow, look at that. Changed his last name 
to say thank you to the Baton Rouge fans. Now he had to change back to the other one that's spelled correctly because he can't just change your name before a game and make it work. But you know what he always makes work? Justin Jefferson. Throws for 352 yards and becomes the SEC's record holder for most passing yards in a single season. Next possession, look, same as it ever was all season. Jamar Chase, 78-yarder. Yeah, why well, stop there now? He's thrown for 44 touchdowns, which ties the SEC record for passing touchdowns in a season. This is a beat down at the half, 31-0, third quarter, Burrow to Chase again. Great speed by Chase. He's been his biggest deep threat all season. Seven catches, buck 97 and two TDs. Mom and Dad Burrow, they love it. So Burrow was removed from the game in the fourth quarter after a timeout, given a standing ovation as he walked off the turf, the turf in Death Valley for one final time. Afterwards, Burrow talked about the jersey. Whose idea was that to come out as Joe Burrow with the X? Yeah, that was my idea. You know, I just wanted to do something to kind of give a tribute to the to this state and this this university that's been so good to me. If he wanted to, he, he can do what he wants. <laughs> I think we have a really mature team. D. Lou, my guy. <laughs> my guys. But, uh, these are your guys, your offensive line, the guys who have your back. But these, no, I, I need to get them a big old Christmas present because they've been so good this year. You guys are all so special. I just need a big group offensive line hug. Can we get it? Can we get it? Let's do it. Yeah, get in. Get in. <laughs> Phenomenal stuff. Oh, that, was, that, was, that was good. Amazing. Uh, he broke Tim Couch's record, did Burrow, for SEC single season record for passing touchdowns. Tied Drew Locke's mark for most touchdown passes. He can still break the FBS mark for completion percentage in the SEC championship. They will play Georgia. Their game against Georgia Tech. What was going to happen was not going to be in question, though. There are major stories coming out of this game on Saturday. First and 10 of the 17, Jake Fromm needed to find someone with Cager out, finds Tyler Simmons. Top receiver Lawrence Cager out of this game with the injury. Jake Fromm spread it around, had 14 completions to 10 different receivers. All right, so this is scary there. DeAndre Swift, direct snap, brought down, fumbles, hurts his shoulder. Yeah, he's their star running back. He fumbled twice early in this game. They would take a look at him, and he would not return to the game. Now, in the post-game press, conference you take another look at the injury Kirby Smart said Swift should be fine for the SEC championship under eight left in the third from wide open George Pickens. remember the, the name George Pickens he's their second leading receiver on this team behind Lawrence Cager who's already out all right so I want you to remember this play for this reason Dominic Blaylock touchdown back over where you saw the telestration Pickens is fighting with Swilling why is this big because Pickens was ejected from the game, and because of it, he will miss the first half of next week's SEC championship game, of which Kirby Smart and the dog still excited to be a part of. Well, I'm excited. You know, you earn the opportunity to play in this game. And people will talk about a lot of uh, games outside this and this being a de facto play-in game and all these different things. The SEC championship is the greatest environment maybe in all of football, okay? Because you can say the Super Bowl and you can say all this, but there is no greater passion for a game than any place in the country when you talk about LSU and the University of Georgia. And no battle for Palmetto State at the barnyard between Clemson and South Carolina. Clemson trying to remain perfect first quarter. It was real quickly assumed that it was going to happen. This is as good as I've seen Trevor Lawrence play in this one. 295 passing yards. He also led his team with 66 rushing yards. How about this to T. Higgins, 65-yard dime? Lawrence has now gone back-to-back -back season, throwing 30 touchdowns. Mid-season, we were about all those interceptions. Yeah, that, <laughs> there is something. What's wrong with Clemson? <laughs> Give the ball to ETN. They did just that. Clemson wins 38-3, to but perhaps the best part of the game from Saturday with Clemson was Dabo Sweeney afterwards saying, you know what? Clemson is just judged to different standards than everybody else. How important is this game? Yeah. It's huge. I mean, I mean, it's it's huge from a national standpoint because obviously, if we lose this game, I mean, they're gonna kick us out. They don't want us in there anyway. Uh, I mean, it, we'd be we'd be we'd drop to twenty. You know, I mean, Georgia loses to this very same team, and the very next day, it's how do we keep Georgia in it? We win to the team that beat South Carolina, and it's we. How do we get Clemson out? It's the dead gummest thing. So it's big because 
you know, they can't vote us out. I mean, we got to we got to go under we got to go 30 and 0. I mean, we ain't got no choice. But we don't play nobody. 30 and 0. Clemson is one of two teams from a Power 5 conference to win four straight conference championships. The Florida Gators won four straight SEC titles in the mid 90s. Tigers will go for five straight next week against Virginia. Okay, Dabo, let's see if you like this. Time now for the Capital One Van Vote to see who you believe should be in the college football playoff. Fan vote, van vote, same thing. Either way, Jesse and Joey have the same top four this week, same teams as last week. However, they've bumped up Utah because of Alabama's loss in the Iron Bowl. Joey, I'm going to start with you because I look at your rankings. To me, it looks as if you have three number ones and this has yeah, a lot a to mistake. do with, with, with Clemson, Ohio, yeah. body of work, I guess. Yeah, three really good football teams. Yeah. And for the first time ever, I have a three-way tie for the number one spot. LSU, they said, wasn't a complete team because their defense. Then they hold Texas A&M to seven points. Ohio State, another 50-something game against Michigan as they dominated a, a top 15 team. And the reason it really matters uh, who's number one, because everyone would like to avoid playing Clemson in a semifinal. This is a Clemson team that people sort of thought wasn't very good when they beat North Carolina by one point. Now they've won six straight games by 35 points. Hadn't happened since 1936 in AP poll era. Uh, Trevor Lawrence, all those interceptions early on. Now two back-to-back -back seasons throwing 30 touchdowns. Oh, no, by the way, the defense, yeah. the number one scoring defense in the country. Nobody, and I mean nobody, wants to see Clemson in the semifinal. Because they're playing as good as any number one team in the country. Very Canadian. Yeah. yeah. Everybody yeah. gets oh, a trophy. You get a trophy. You get a trophy. But those are three quality teams you could all argue being number one. Jess, with you, I want to talk about the Big 12. Not in your top five, any Big 12 teams, but two teams in Oklahoma and Baylor who appear to be in good position. Yeah, and really, a few weeks ago, it was the Big 12 that was the Power 5 conference that was on the outside looking into the playoff picture. And we've seen a lot of momentum last week for the Big 12 with respect to the committee. There was a market correction. Baylor went from 14 to number 9, and Oregon loses last week. Bama and Minnesota lose this weekend. All of a sudden, the Big 12 title game now it looks like it's going to be a top seven matchup. Could the winner of that game get into the playoff over Utah? Now, Utah has been ranked ahead of both Oklahoma and Baylor in every college football playoff ranking, and Utah certainly passes the eye test. Since their loss earlier against USC yeah. in eight games, they're winning on an average by 29 points. They look great, but we'll keep our eyes on the Pac-12 title game, the Big 12 title game. Who wins and how they win? I think goes a long way in determining who the fourth team is getting in. We know Oklahoma and Baylor are both going to be ranked higher than Oregon, which is who Utah plays in the Pac-12. How much is that going to be a factor come final rankings? All right, here you go. A look at some of the conference championship games this week. Can't wait to see him. Go to twitter.com slash sports center to vote on Monday for your Capital One one fan vote. Can't wait for that. Also cannot wait for this, the selection show, Sunday, December 8th at noon. We will announce the four teams in the playoff, the New Year Six, everything rankings related takes place Sunday, December 8th at noon on ESPN. Still ahead on college football final rivalry weekend is good at Oak and Bucket, Kentucky and Louisville. They're playing for all of it. We'll break them down on college football final. Welcome back to college football final presented by Mazda. We had a civil war between Oregon and Oregon State. Justin Herbert looking to finish his college career with the win against its arch rival. Second quarter, up 10-3. Herbert to Johnny Johnson, the third. That's his 94th career TD pass. Oregon struggled on offense in this game, though. They needed a kick return touchdown from Michael Wright. Tristan Jabia then finds Jamar Jefferson on the screen. Jefferson, one defender missed, tries to hurdle another, but he fumbles. Yeah, Oregon State is only down seven in the fourth. They need this win to become bowl eligible. Just, you gotta hold on to the ball, Matthew. Oregon at 10 win siege for the first time since 2014. The Sunshine State Showdown. Gators, Florida State, second quarter. Gators lead 13-7, senior night just about everywhere. Hey, guys, Kyle Trask is back. Coming, coming back, back next year. Big news, 343 passing yards, three TDs. This was all QB. Brady Swain, great job <laughs> taking it in 
on the bubble. That was his second touchdown of the game, third quarter. Florida up 20. Emory Jones, he's also back. He finds Jefferson six yarder. Emory Jones is just happy they got to throw a pass in this game. Here's five of six. He's the after the quarterback used to run it. Gators defeat Knowles in consecutive seasons for the first time since 2009. Oh, the old Oaken bucket. Purdue, Indiana, Aiden O'Connell's oh, yeah. bounces off Bryce Hopkins. Why not? That's just how Jeff Brom draws that up. Jackson Anthrop with a beautiful catch. Later in the drive, O'Connell, Hopkins, six-yard touchdown. Purdue ties the game. We go to a second overtime now. Second overtime, Peyton Ramsey to Peyton Hendershot, 14-yard completion, Indiana at the goal line. Next play, Peyton Ramsey, keep it in. How about Indiana? 44-41. What a finish for the Hoosiers in two overtimes. Governor's Cup. Kentucky Louisville and Lynn Bowden Jr. Bowden had one. a terrible game. He was one of two passing for four yards. I mean, it, it was oh, just awful. embarrassing. You got to find a way to. Yeah. to they, yeah. they should have benched him. It's, it's, yeah, find a way to help out the offense. Contribute. Like do something. How about a 60-yard touchdown there and a 46-yarder here? And this guy was playing wide receiver at the start of the year. Injuries forced him into the quarterback position. He runs for 284 yards. Oh, so he did have a good game. Guys, day. I mean, look, we've been doing the countdown thing, and he's number one, and next week, I mean, we're doing I mean, if he one. keeps this up. he got to pass for more yards, I mean, man. Four, four, four yards five, passing? 13, yeah, yeah. Be pass a dual threat. Yeah. Do something. All right, so Kentucky gets the win of that one over Louisville. So we're counting down. We started at 15. We are down at two for the best to ever wear number two in our celebration of 150 years of college football. Joey, give me your number two. I'm excited about this guy because I couldn't wait to get to the NFL to play against prime time because oh. he was one of the fastest guys to ever play the game. Two-time consensus All-American. Won the Jim Thorpe in 1988 as the most outstanding defensive back. Now, here's the tricker. He is tied with Lee Corso. For the third most career interceptions at Florida State. I didn't know Lee Corso Sunshine played. Scooter? I didn't know he played defensive back. We must be really good. He was as good as Deion Sanders. Well, I was only in the league five years, so I didn't have a chance to play against Cam Newton. But he was one of three Auburn players to win the Heisman Trophy, joining Pat Sullivan and Bo Jackson. Threw for over 2,800 yards, 1,400 rushing yards, one of two guys in SEC history, joining Johnny Manziel to do that. Led Auburn to its first national title in over 50 years. Also was the number one pick by the Panthers. Guys, this list might be the best we've had. Those are great number twos. My number two, Charles Woodson. Still only the primarily defensive player to ever win the Heisman Trophy Award. Won it 97. 97, a big year for him. Big 10 Defensive Player of the Year. Led the league in interceptions with seven. Won the Bronco Nagurski, Chuck McNark. Jim Thorpe and that iconic picture. Charles Woodson, my best number two of all time. So we have arrived at number one. Gentlemen, do not say who you're going to pick, but looking at the list, do you know who you're going to pick? Yes. Yeah, I got my guy. Yeah, I got my guy. All right. All right. <laughs> that was quick. All right. See that? All right. So those are the list as we wrap up our celebration of 150 years of college football. Uh, Notre Dame had virtual lock implications, as did SMU. And when I say Joey Galloway is the king of the backdoor cover band, the Notre Dame one was remarkable. Plus, Mount Union, this is an incredible story. They're in the Division III ranks. They lost to North Central 59-52. It's their earliest Division III playoff exit since 1994. Show up. College Football Final is presented by Mazda. Feel alive. And in part by Tostitos. Get to the good stuff. And Ancestry. Give a gift that'll get the whole family talking. 21st annual Big Ten ACC Challenge. Tuesday is going to be good. Duke and Michigan State. And then Wednesday, Ohio State and North Carolina and Chapel Hill. Two great nights of hoop on Sonic Blockbusters on ESPN and the ESPN app. Better hurry up, offense, gentlemen. UNC, NC State, North Carolina try to become bowl eligible in their annual rivalry game. Third quarter, North Carolina down 10-6. Javante Williams, 26-yard touchdown. Sam Howe had a big one, throwing for 400 yards and three touchdowns as North Carolina gets their sixth win. Congratulations to Mac Brown. It was a beat down here. Sam Howell, good toss, too. Sam Howell, phenomenal in this game. The freshman threw for 401 yards and yeah. four. Look at Mac dancing him to a bowl game in year one. Again, year one. Arizona State, Arizona Territorial Cup. Eno Benjamin had a big night for the second consecutive year. Herm Edwards beats U of A 
24-14. Sun Devils finished seven and five on the season. And speaking of seven and five, I don't know that there's a better seven and five in the country than Tennessee based on other seasons. Good call, starts. Eric Ray. The freshman runs for 246 yards and three scores. Remember they lost to Georgia State. Amazing. Week one. Well, they've now won five in a row. Great job by Jeremy. Pruitt. Absolutely. 28-10 over Vanderbilt. Top plays now from Saturday. Wake. Syracuse, Sam Hartman to Kendall Hinton, but Trill Williams picks it out of the thin air and goes 94 yards. Yeah, he just took it right out of his hand. Now can he go the distance, because if he doesn't, then it doesn't matter. And he gets there. That'd be a shame if he didn't. You're right, because then we couldn't call it a top play. Number four, FCS, first round, Albany, Central Connecticut State. Albany, Jeff Undercuffler. Throws oh, it up. give me oh, that. Oh, my goodness. Left hand Tyler over top of the corner. Uh. I'll take that. How about Central Connecticut State right up the That's street here? Crystal. Look at that. Albany wins, though. Number three, Middle Tennessee, Western Kentucky. Middle Tennessee's Ty Lee. How about the concentration? Smack it down with one hand. Keep your eye on as you're falling backwards. Defensive back still has no idea what happened. No personal tip drill, nor should he. Number two, more FCS, Texas State, Coastal Carolina. Isaiah Kelly, back foot. Able to bring it in right yeah. here. Unbelievable. Gets one hand under it. I'm not really sure where the. Yeah, it's one just hand diving, just sliding getting, into the. Hey guys, feel about that teal turf? Yeah, that's uh, nice. Number one, Aiden O'Connell to David Bell. Oh, <laughs> okay. It was too handsome. Great catch. We have reached the portion of the program and season where we are handing out the final helmet stickers of the regular season. Your grace. J.K. Dobbins, 31 carries, 211 yards, four touchdowns, the first player to ever go to the big house and rush for four touchdowns against a ranked Michigan team. Lynn Bowden Jr., quarterback Kentucky against Louisville, guys. Get ready for this. Right. One completion, two attempts, four yards, baby. Nice. He also ran for 284 yards in okay, four That breaks an SEC record for the most rushing yards ever in a game by a quarterback. So. That'll do it. Yeah. What about my guy, Peyton Ramsey, Indiana? Over 300 yards passing, three touchdown passes, two rushing touchdowns. They played overtimes for the old Oaken bucket. Peyton Ramsey gets my helmet stick. A big day for him. Talk about quarterbacks breaking SEC records. How about Joe Burrow? And look at the spelling. He deserved a, a sticker just for Burrow. the spelling of his name. But Joe Burrow breaks the record for SEC passing yards in a season, ties the record for SEC touchdown passes in a season, and it's been an argument. How many stickers can Joe Burrow get in one season? Exactly. Three. Yeah, that's he's gotten three from us. That's why you know he's the Heisman front runner right now. Uh, Brant Keithy from Utah, versatile player, 59 rushing yards and a tutty, 63 receiving yards, two tutties as they beat Colorado. But get this, he's a tight end. You don't see a lot of tight ends that versatile. He's trying to help this team reach the playoffs. You know what you don't see often? Mountain Union getting bounced from the playoffs this early. That's because of Brock Rudder, quarterback of North Central. 522 passing yards, five touchdowns, early exit Rudder. from Mountain Union for the first time since 1994.